quote, historical fiction thriller that reads just like today's newspaper. It's so supernatural uh, that I'm amazed at some of the things he put in here. J just between you and me, you have a uh, the first female president of the United States. Was she running when you started this book? Did you know that there that she would uh, be running for president? Had no clue. No one threw their hat into the arena yet. Um, I truly believe, Sid, that what is in that book was right from God. Now, l listen, Neil was a strong Christian, but he really, in his head, but in his heart, he wasn't so sure about this supernatural realm. If this book is filled with written on two levels, what's going on in the spirit realm and how it's affecting the natural realm, I mean, it, it's such, you won't want to put this book down. But Neil really and truly didn't believe this, and uh, his wife, a, a year earlier, was given a word from God, you'll live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. She didn't quite understand it. She asked Neil to start praying. She started seeing demonic activity. She actually was attacked one night, and Neil wouldn't do anything. What changed your mind, Neil? I love her with all my heart. And those of you that have a, a relationship, 35 years invested, you will do anything for that person. I mean, when, she w when you found out bile duct cancer, oh, absolutely. No, hope no hope of surviving, you came to your senses. We went to every major hospital where you got the same diagnosis, Hopkins, Mayo Clinic, UPMC, less than six months to live. No one has ever survived having 80% of their liver consumed with cancer. So I no quite one? A, no one has ever survived. Mm -hmm. Cindy's tumor marker, which measures how much cancer you have, was the highest ever recorded. Most people die with a tumor marker of between three and four hundred. Cindy was thirty seven thousand. Mm -hmm. So I cried out to God. I called Messianic Vision. I called the seven hundred club. I called everybody to pray for my wife. But it wasn't until one day I called a counselor at the 700 Club and she revealed to me, even though Cindy's trying to tell me this, that she didn't believe what Cindy had was natural, but it was supernatural. And it's like the blinders fell off my eyes. And I realized at that moment, and I'm filled with scriptures, okay, I know the scriptures, but I, I realized that it was my responsibility as the spiritual head of the household to pray over my wife. And at that moment, I took authority in Jesus' name. I walked around my house seven times. First time casting out all the demons. Second time, I prayed angels around my house. And then I started quoting God's word. I have not stopped from that moment on, Sid, every day, morning through night. Cindy, do you believe that made a difference in your, the fact that you're even with us today? Oh, definitely, Sid, because once he started taking authority as head of the household, um, I was jaundiced. My jaundice went away, and I was able to start eating at buffets. Now, God does not have to work through a miracle that we fashion in our mind. God is going to work the way he wants to work. Mm -hmm. And he directed Neil and Cindy to a doctor in a very supernatural fashion that came up with new technology. Explain that. Our doctor... Dr. Jerome Kennedy invented a tool using a light beam that dissolves cancer cells that are wrapped around arteries. You cannot remove cancer from a vein or an artery with a scalpel. He is the only human being who has this patent. He is a spirit-filled Christian. He gives God all the glory and credit for this. So here we are searching the world for a doctor. Where did we find one? In the hospital where Cindy was born. Cindy spent all summer of 2007 living at her mother's house. God had a perfect plan. Yeah. And Cindy is 100% cancer free. No human being has ever survived having 80% of their liver removed in November of 2007. If you hadn't prayed, Neil, uh, she'd be dead. Would, you're sure? She, oh, I, without a doubt, Cindy would be dead. I mean, that was like a needle in a haystack to find that doctor. Absolutely. And one thing, Sid, I can tell you for sure, Satan wanted her dead. Satan did not want me to finish writing that book. Give me a thumbnail sketch of this book, Newton's Riddle. Sir Isaac Newton died in 1727. And for the last 30 years of his life, he truly felt that God wanted him to find out when Christ was going to return. And what it shows us is he found out when it was. 
No other book. All these left behind books take you into the book of Revelation. He found out that Jesus' return is now. Listen, as wonderful as the Left Behind series was, it doesn't hold a candle to the nowness right. of this book. Absolutely. Give me, a, again, a thumbnail sketch of the book. Um, Satan has a plan. Now, we never think, and it's never taught in churches, and no one hears about this, but Satan sits down and strategizes with his demonic princes. And they sit down and they plan it out just like the government does. Um, and what happens in the book is the Academy Awards from Hell in Chapter 7, in which they, award, they go back and they give each other awards for all the schemes that they've done, uh, how they've desensitized us to sexual sins, and how they've destroyed the families in America. This is all plots that they, they've done for the past 45 and, and years. And you see this on the two levels. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. But the premise of disease hits the nation, the president doesn't know what is going to happen, uh, and she has a meeting from one of the stars in this in in your book, right. and he discusses a scripture with her. What this is, is the scripture, Genesis twelve three. God admonishes all nations throughout time. I will bless those who bless the descendants of of Abraham, the Jewish people, and I will curse those who curse. And America, since its foundation, has opened its arms to the Jews. And isn't it amazing that he is from Annapolis, Maryland, where they had a plan to go against Genesis 12.3. God says, I will curse those who curse the Jewish people. Don't get away. It's gonna, don't you leave. This is getting exciting. Be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. For he himself is our peace, who has made both Jew and Gentile into one, and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. His purpose was to create in himself. To create in himself. His purpose was to create one new man. One new man. One new man. Один новый человек. The Adam Hadash Echad. One new man. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Neil and Cindy Russell, and I'm holding the hottest supernatural book. It's historical fiction, but it reads like today's newspaper. And just before uh, the break, we were talking about where God says, I, God, will bless those who bless the Jewish people, Genesis, the 12th chapter, the third verse, and I, God, will curse those who curse them. And one of the curses is dividing up the land of Israel because the 105th Psalm, God says, I give the physical land of Israel unconditionally and forever, he even uses the word everlasting, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in his physical seed. So God considers dividing up the land of Israel as opening up for a curse. And there's so many curses that take place in the United States when this occurs. Uh, Neil, tell me a bit about uh, this Genesis 12.3 and the other scripture that comes into play in this book. Said, I believe God has shown me scriptures that have yet to be fulfilled. And one of the scriptures is Psalm 83, in which uh, Israel cries out at a time in the future for God to intervene because they're ready to be annihilated. There is this plot from the surrounding Muslim nations to wipe Israel off the face of the map. And if we take a look at the news today, this is as current as right now. There's pressure on Israel to give back their covenant land to their enemies. And we saw this back in, I believe, 2005, the first time since Israel returned back to the land in 48 that they gave back a piece of their land. And it was under direct pressure from our president and uh, the secretary of state that Israel gave back the Gaza Strip. And what was the repercussion to the United States for having done that? The moment the last Jew was forcibly let out of the Gaza, and this is the moment, a tropical system formed off the coastline of Florida. Its name was Katrina. Hmm. And we all know what happened there. Katrina turned into a monster, and it struck the Gulf Coast. It struck uh, the city of New Orleans. It destroyed most of Mississippi. 
and thousands of people were killed. Thousands of people are homeless. But at the same time, a year later, there were still thousands of Americans still living in shelters. And at the same time in Israel, there were thousands